Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. Well, you know, our last frost date here was May 15th, and that was a couple days ago. And I just recently visited Ray's Greenhouse and bought a lot of my warm weather crops. And so today I'm going to share some tips and ideas with you on how to plant Cherokee purple tomatoes and it's an heirloom variety. So thanks for joining me today out here in the vegetable garden. And so these Cherokee purple tomatoes, you know, they love the heat. You know, they, uh, the warm weather crops like your peppers and tomatoes and melons and zucchini, they love warm feet, you know, and you want to make sure that they get a good six to eight hours of sunlight. You know, I always say the more the better. And I'm going to be growing these and planting these in my composted leaf mulch that's amended with topsoil. And I amend it with topsoil because it adds minerals to the soil. I also buy that locally from uh, Barnside Farms and I get it certified weed free so I really don't have much weeding to do during the garden season. It's, I pay around $30 a yard and uh, around $25 for delivery and so I get anywhere from 5 to 10 yards but you know on every plant tag they do give you some helpful information here. Here it says that this matures in 70 to 90 days and the fruit size is 10 to 12 in inches, uh, 10 to 12 ounces the uh, fruit size is. And it's a medium dusky rose fruit with brick red flesh and rich flavor. And you always want to make sure you're, you're planting these in a good, rich, fertile, loose soil. So anyhow, I'm going to be uh, planting these right behind me on, in one of my four foot by eight foot raised garden beds. So follow me over there. So I just thought I would pan the garden area to give you an idea on how the garden's progressing. It's still early in the season. But anyhow, I'm going to be planting these uh, tomatoes right here in this bed right here. And so I ended up paying $1.60 for this six pack of tomato plants. And you know, these are indeterminate variety. That means they'll keep on growing right up until the frost date, you know. so. And then you also have the, the determinate variety, and they're a shorter season, a shorter growing tomato plant. I use those for canning, and then also that way your, your harvest is staggered, and these will take you right up to the frost, and uh, you know, you want to provide some type of trellis. Now, I have a 2 by 4 frame above me here, and I'm going to be some, hanging some rope down. Uh, to attach to these tomato plants and I call it the rope and twist method and so as the plant grows taller I'll just twist the, the rope around it and so it's really something a uh, nice easy way to support your tomatoes and you also want to make sure you work through your soil with your garden fork make sure it's nice and loose you know because the looser the soil you know the, the roots are going to reach far and wide they'll take up more nutrients resulting in a healthier stronger more uh, productive plant and so so anyhow right above me on my two by fours I have some hooks here where I'm going to be hand, hanging string down like I said earlier and so I'm simply going to come back about a foot from the edge of the, the uh, raised bed and you know it never hurts to inspect your plant to make sure it's not root bound you know where it's not where it hasn't been growing in the, the pack too long you don't want it choked out by roots and these you can tell that they haven't been growing that long but it's minimal roots. And so you just simply want to dig a little hole. You can either use your trowel or your hand. And I always use my fork 
fingers to press down on both sides of the plant. And then I have another hook about right here. These are going to be planted about two feet apart. And you know, tomato, so you can always plant a little deeper. So uh, that's always a good idea to do that. Sometimes you can take off the first branch and then uh, plant them a little deeper. And in no time with, with, with this heat, you know, these are going to really take off. Again, something really easy and simple to do in your garden. And this compost is going to feed these plants really nice. And then you just want to water these in and keep them well watered during the growing season. You know, here in Pennsylvania, we're going to have a warm week ahead. We're Today it's supposed to be up to 90 degrees. And I also get people asking me, how do I keep the deer off my plants? Well, mostly want to keep them off while the plants are young. And so I have this fence section here that I cover these plants with. And it'll keep the deer off them. You know, the whole size here is two inch by four inch. And it's going to do a good job keeping the deer off. And uh, once these get about a foot high, then I'm going to suspend the string down from my 2x4 support above and then start uh, twisting it around these plants as they get taller. So anyhow, I hope this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the section below. And you can also vis visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim your health by adopting a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. One day, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.